This video will show you how to make a multiplayer dice game using the micro bit and make code blocks. We're going to break this into two pieces. The first part will show how to set up the code for a single die, and this part is a beginner project. Then we'll add the necessary code to turn it into a two player dice game, which is an intermediate project. In the two player game, both players will shake their dice and then each player will receive a signal from the other micro bit saying what the role of that person was. And then a smiley, frowny or neutral face will be displayed depending on if it was a win, lose or draw. So now let's start by writing the code for the single die. First, I'm going to get rid of the forever block because I don't need that at all in this project. And then I'll just drag the on start block over to the side here, just kind of out of the way because I don't need it for this portion of the project. And then I need to shake the dice. So I'm going to go into input and select the on shake block. And you can see this has a lot of other options in it, but we're going to shake the dice for this particular thing. And then what I want to do is display a, a, the value of a random number between 1 and 6. So I'm going to go into basic and I'm going to select show number and place that in the on shake. Now, as I said, I want a random number and that's a math function. So I'm going to go into the math category and scroll down until I see pick random. Drag that over the 0 and then change the values on that from 0 to 1 and from 10 to 6. Okay, now we can test this in the simulator. So I'm going to click on this shake button that appeared, and I've got a four. We'll click it again, and we've got a six. And we can do it again, and we've got another four. Let's do it one more time to make sure we just don't get fours and sixes, and then we got a two. Okay, that's it for this portion. The next step is to turn this into a two-player game. Okay, I have a pick random number out here, but what I need to do is put it into a variable so that we can compare it to the other person's role. So the first thing I want to do is create a variable. So I'll go into variables, click on make a variable, and I'm going to call my variable local val. Click OK. Now I want to set local val to a random number, so I'm going to click on the set local and drag it out and place it at the top of the on shake block. And then drag this pick random. Make sure you just click that portion of it and drag it over the zero there. And then the number I'm going to show is the is the variable local val, whatever stored in that. So I'll click on variables, drag a local val block out and drag that over that zero. Now we can test this again and make sure that it still works. So we'll go over here and click on shake and it still shows a number. Click again, we get a three. Again, we get a six. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is communicate our number to our opponent's number. To do that, we need to use commands in the radio category. These are the commands that communicate between different micro bits. And the first radio command we want to use is one that tells the two micro bits to communicate with each other. And that one is the radio set group. So I'm going to drag that out and place it in the on start block. Now, this number can be anything from 1 to 255. And the way it works is that each group of micro bits that are supposed to be talking to each other use a unique number. So if you're in a classroom, you would want to have each pair of students that are working together have a unique number. For this example, I'll just leave it at one. So then now we can go ahead and send our value to our opponent. So I'm going to go into radio and select radio send number. And I'll place that under the show number here. Then go to variables, or I could just click here actually and click on that local val and duplicate it. But you could go to variables and drag out another one. And I'll place that over the zero in send number. Now each micro bit has to receive the number. So to do that, we go into radio and select the on radio received, received number. Now received number is itself a variable. So any comparisons we do with received num number, will just use that variable for the comparison. 
Now, what I'm going to do is put a pause at the beginning of this particular block just to make sure both people have rolled. Um, and I'm going to do the simulator over here. So I want to make sure I have time to roll as well. So I'm going to go into basic and select a pause and drag that into the on radio received. And I'm going to set it to two seconds just to give myself a lot of time. Now, I want to show what the received number was. So I'm going to click on this show number here and duplicate it. And then I'm going to drag it below the pause in the on radio received block. I don't want local val, val here, though, so I'm going to drag that into the trash, duplicate received number, and drag that over the zero. Now, we want to compare the two numbers and show a happy face if we win, a frowny face if they win, and we're going to use a squiggle face for neutral. So to do that, let's go into logic and select the if then block and drag that into the on radio received. Let me pull this up here. Now we have this where this true is. What we want to have here is a logical comparison. So we'll go into logic and pull out a comparison. It doesn't matter which one you pull out. And I want to compare local val with a received number. So I'm going to click on the local val variable, duplicate it, and I'm going to drag that over the left hand zero. I'm going to set this to greater than and then I'm going to click on received number, duplicate it, and drag that over the other zero. Now, if local val is greater than received number, that means I won, and therefore I want to display a smiley face. I'm going to go into basic and select show icon. And then I'm going to find the smiley face and show that. Okay, we need two more. So we can show a frowny face if we lose. So to do that, we need to add another if then statement. Now that just adds an else, but we need one more so we can show all three. So this is another if statement and we'll do the uh, frowny face in this one. So let's select this logical comparison block, duplicate it, and then drag it over the false. And we'll just change this to a less than. Now we want the frowny face, so I'm going to duplicate that show icon, drag it into the else if block, and switch it to a frowny face. Now I've done the greater than comparison for us winning, the less than comparison for us losing, and then the last one is just going to be what equal would be. So I don't have to do a comparison for this one. I can just display the face. So I'm going to duplicate show icon, drag it into the else block, and then select the squiggle face. Now I'm going to test it. And what I'm going to do is go over and click on the shake button. And when I do that, it's going to add another micro bit. So that'll give me the ability to test both of them. So I'm going to scroll over here, click on shake, and then when the next one appears, I'll click on that one. And you can see that it, it popped up the value that was on the other micro bit. And in each case, it then gave me the correct response. Now you can download this onto real micro bits and test it. And that's more fun, but this is as far as I'm going to go with it here. Um, and that's it for this video. There's a link in the notes to the companion blog post that will have a link to where you can access this code and also the process I went through. So you can use it in a classroom if you want. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to know when I, when I post more. I have other content elsewhere, and if you want to find out about other things I'm doing, consider subscribing to my newsletter. And there's a link in the notes for this video, and there's also a link on my YouTube channel and on my website. So thanks for watching.